Welcome along to the return of Crunching Gears. This is Season 3, Episode 1. This episode started taking shape, I suppose, about a month ago, when I got a phone call from Donna Kelly, saying if I would be available to call out to his new project, the Stables Motorsport Museum. He was having an open day and having some very special guests along. Two of those that really sparked an interest in me was Ari Vatten and Terry Harriman. Donna said he would try and get me a few minutes with the guys to maybe record a, a short piece. I didn't have to be asked twice, I can tell you. Uh, I'd like to thank Terry and Ari for taking the time to let me hear some of their stories. It's fascinating listen. I should also mention Alan Harriman, Terry's son, who gave me some advice and some help along the way and also gave me my own Dear God moment when he mentioned, thankfully after the recording, that the two guys had probably hadn't sat down and went through their story for over 30 years. It would be very remiss of me now not to take the opportunity to thank Donna Kelly for giving me this once in a lifetime opportunity. They say, never meet your heroes. I don't know. These four guys went over and above to make this happen and I really, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy it and if you do, can you please like and share and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Oh, and almost five world championship rallies in succession. How long is this going to go on? Well, I must say that I'm not really concerned by that question, you know, for the time being, you know. What, what I have got, I have got them, and, you know, we will see. Of course, it would be nice to add maybe one more, but, I mean, I'm very happy with these already. Excellent. More than, it's more than my share, for sure. So you've had a good rally, obviously. Yeah, generally, generally speaking, very good. I mean, no problems with the car at all, not whatsoever. Just one my off and, and uh, that basically. Excellent. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, Terry. Morning. What sort of night have you had? All right. Cold. Long. But all right. I'm glad it's almost over. Of course, yes. Yeah. I'd stretch on a bit much. It's been just nicer there to run it right through. No rest hall training like that. I finished about four hours ago, still. Just been saying to Ari, five world championships in a row, and how much longer can it go on? So we don't win the next one. <laughs> um, it's going very well. We've led, we've led all seven we've done and won, won the last five, so uh, obviously it can't go on forever. I'm absolutely over the moon to welcome along two legends of rallying. Harry Vattenen and Terry Harriman, you are very welcome along. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Um, Terry, I suppose we'll start with yourself. You mentioned, you know, before you'd never like you'd been co-driving for twenty, twenty-five years at this stage, and you got the nod that you should make a phone call to Harry Vattenen. Was that were you nervous making that phone call? Nervous isn't really the right word. It was anxious. Uh huh. So Why? So I would say something <laughs> and immediately put me out of the picture. Um, it's a sort of thing. Joan Passos. It was him that rang me up. Remember Joan? In Portugal. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, of course, I, of course, I, my friend is. Yes, of course, I know. Yeah. So it was I, him that I, rang me up and said. Maybe he found you. He rang me up and said that I should ring you because you were looking for a co-driver yeah, from Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. And as the tenant of the World Rally Champion, I mean, I couldn't believe this. I thought it was a wind up. <laughs> and it took a bit of courage on my behalf to have the pluck to speak to you. Now he's exaggerating. <laughs> now he's what? You are exaggerating now. No, I'm not. No, no. And I'm known as a very nice, uh, soft-spoken, uh, kind guy. I don't hit anybody. <laughs> it was just something yeah, that I never, ever considered. <laughs> I wasn't looking for a career in rallying, actually. Not mm -hmm. as a co-driver, anyhow. Yeah. I'd always wanted to be a driver. But a long time before this, I realised that I couldn't do that, so... And it was just an opportunity that I couldn't miss. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So excited, excited, definitely anxious. Uh-huh. Not really petrified or worried or scared. Uh-huh. That's petrified a bit later. But <laughs> <laughs> Very soon. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> so, are you, like, I suppose for yourself, like eighty-two Swedish rally, it was a wee bit of a step back. You know, you were the current world champion. And then all of a sudden you were back in like a private car. Totally. You had to get your own funding probably to do the event, no? Very true. I, 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 uh, the year of it should have been uh, the, in a way highlight or to wrap the benefits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a totally the contrary. So I, 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 I remember I sat uh, down in my, um, uh, my little office and um, took the yellow pages and started to go through uh, companies in Finland, Helsinki. I'm Ari Vatane here. Would you like to sponsor me in the Swedish rally? And um, Rita, Rita kept some uh, accounting, you know, and I, I actually have that piece of paper in my in my archives uh, mm-hmm. where Rita accounted uh, Serial Line Boat Company, 3,000 Finnish marks, uh, mm-hmm. and, and Hakka Pelita Tires, 5,000, whatever. Uh, and, and, and we just managed to get some kind of budget and mm-hmm. had to hire, had to hire Rekika from Kirsti Hamalan and then First or second evening we rolled it <laughs> in the recce, in the recce. <laughs> so uh, half of the budget had gone. But anyway, bearing in mind that Audi Quattro was already yes. out there and, uh, and, and, uh, and we finished in a privately sponsored car second. Yes. So not bad, not, not bad. bad. You know, first time out and against the mate of Audi, they had three cars there. Um, I watched a video recently that um, you were uh, going into the final night, you were fourth. And it, the, the guy was asking the question, will you push? And you said, no, no, we'd settle. And Dave Sutton says, no, no, we go hard. <laughs> so <laughs> I see, exactly. Yeah. But 82 yeah. progressed and, you know, you built up a good relationship. Um, Opel come along then looking to sign you then for 83, Rockman's Opel, just on the RAC in 82. Is it fair to say that the, the Manta, well, the Skona originally and then into the Manta, didn't really suit your style? No, it didn't. Uh, you know, there are two cars which really suited for Ford Escort and then uh, and and particularly Peugeot, and of course uh, Subaru Impreza was also good. Uh-huh. And uh, I mean personally, so I mean I like cars with some oversteering and confidence inspiring. That uh, at least I know that car has turned, so then I can floor it. Uh-huh. If the car is understeering, your nose is uh, you know. Um, escaping from you and all you can do is uh, lift off and uh, slow down and 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 anyway car needs to be like a glove in your hand that uh, mm-hmm. you you think that you can do whatever you want and even if you go too far you make a mistake you will still think that it will forgive you yes and 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 of course then you are you know that's you are full of confidence and 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 that makes all the difference you know engineers uh, cannot calculate that in the excel Excel uh, uh, specs it doesn't give that in any computer that yes. confidence well behaving car gives you and that of course depends what your <coughs> what your driving style is like mm-hmm. so um, Opel if Opel was not made for me it was made for Walter Röhl but not for me yeah but saying that you know you'd won the 83 Safari Rally in the Skona like that was your first one in the, that level Terry it must have been so satisfying after as I said 20 25 years to be regarded at that level, that must have been such a, a great couldn't, feeling. Couldn't believe it was happening. Okay. Especially as we had so many problems. Yeah. With punctures, back axle broken. Back axle, yeah. Animals. Yeah. All all things. And one stage we were, I think, two hours and forty minutes behind sure, the leader. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seventh or eight. Two hours uh-huh. and forty minutes yes. behind. Uh-huh. Exactly seventh. Yes. I think. Uh-huh. And to come back and won it then? And they started making mistakes, falling out. Mm-hmm. We were going along very nicely and just picking up the places. And what was it? Final four, night. Final four, night. Four minutes? Yeah, four very close. And, and we didn't know. We knew that Hanno Mikko is catching us uh-huh. up with the Audi. And we didn't know. And the thing was that the back axle had already collapsed once. And you, you could see, you could see when you looked at the rear tires, they're coming out like this, which meant that the back axle was not any more straight, yes. but back axle was actually coming, the tubes were coming out of the diff. 
Yes. And 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 the and the axle would be like in a slight V shape, okay. and you would see the rear rear wheels. So I remember, you know, we I we saw that the rear wheel rear diff is about to go uh-huh. about to go, and 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 same time we didn't know how close the uh, Hannu Mikkola is that we need to push. And I, I remember how how re- big relief it was, and uh, mm-hmm. and at that time to win East Africa Safari, it was a big thing, wasn't it? It yep. was a, it was. One of the, you know, if you had it in your, in your, that you have run East African Safari, it was, it was like Monte Carlo, something else. Yeah. Yep. Well, I did it the previous year, year with Tony Pond and I couldn't believe that we finished fourth. And that felt honestly, good. looking at everything and counting the stupid mistake I made by following Walter Rural into a mud hole and, yeah. and was told it was Rhino. And it wasn't, and then we had we were in there for nearly an hour. Really. And if you took half of that hour off, we could have won the really, Tony, really? Tony, really? Mm-hmm. Tony and I. Yeah. yeah, really. Again, it was the same sort of drive, except mm-hmm. when we did the recce, you drove over the stages once, and I did it with Tony Pond the year before. He would drive three hundred meters. Back 200 meters, half a kilometer, back no, 100 meters. No, really? Don't even like that. We went around the whole route four times. And every time the car broke down, which was very, very regular. Yeah, yeah. There was no mechanics with you on the recce. They were all back in the workshop in Nairobi. Of course. You couldn't so. pick a place where you stopped beside the telephone box. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. there's no such thing. <laughs> and so we had to sit and wait until somebody came along. And for how long were you wrecking? Weeks and weeks? Six weeks. Six weeks? Oh and dear. With you. <laughs> old good days. <laughs> with you. One lap. Oh, the pencil's gone. When you find your pencil, or fix your pencil, just mark it in there, lost pencil. <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't understand. Really? Really? You don't that. No, of course I don't. That's, that's a good story. <laughs> pencil lost. So at least I knew yes. pencil was lost. So I had to, drive, you know, pay drive. attention, drive accordingly. <laughs> so yeah, it worked. So I was I was quite relaxed in that way. Yeah. Oh, Yet yeah. I wanted in a real rally. I mean, I did practice a lot also, but sometimes even uh, Acropolis, I didn't practice a lot at all okay. because I thought it's so rough and if the notes are right and I believed in it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yet yeah, for then the chance to sign for Peugeot Talbot. Like, it was a big leap to take that because they were unproven. Like, was it, did you see the potential there or what was the idea? Did you know, did you think this could be the car that could take, give you that second world championship? No, I always remember some one particular English mechanic who had worked with Talbot and therefore he had worked with uh, French, uh, you know, with, uh, with Desaudel, but also with the French. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, Ari, Ari, you, don't, you mustn't go there. You know what the French are like. You know, they they only take French drivers and French spare parts and French soak up servers and French this and French. Oh, you know what these frogs are like. Don't go there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember one particular mechanic. But, you know, when I saw Jean Dort and I realized how serious he is, I saw the mechanics, I saw the engineers. I felt, I felt. No, this is going to work really, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I, uh, and and of course it went better than you ever imagined. Anybody could imagine. Uh, exactly. uh, incredible period. Mm-hmm. First few tests, with some, uh, uh, you know, tra- you know, wishbones broke in 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 uh, in Italy, mm-hmm. and next test they didn't break anymore, and we broke it so fast. Harry, what was your opinion on it? Like it was such a family-based team, like it was, it was like bringing you into the the front room almost, wasn't it? The the friendship that was there and that French team, they were family yeah, oriented. Yeah. It was such a, a... We were made very welcome mm-hmm. and they would do, do anything for us sure. virtually. I mean, mm-hmm. just nothing was a problem. It was just so nice to be there with them. Sure, mm-hmm. oh, no, fantastic feeling. And yeah. of course, Persia was doing very badly financially at that time. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, we really uh, indirectly Peugeot rally success as a whole helped and everybody agrees that everybody uh, says that now that it helped mm-hmm. a lot Peugeot to recover recover the position in a, in a car market yeah. mm-hmm. 
and like what the start I think was the second stages were fastest on the tour de course. Yeah, 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 yeah. And leading the rally, um, phenomenal debut for an unproven car against you know the mm. Audi at that team was that time was the, without a doubt the team to beat. Like the four wheel drive yeah. had become yeah. such a great thing. Mm-hmm. So on the tarmac the Lancia. Mm-hmm. And the Lancia is right, sorry, I yeah, the old three seven, yep. Uh-huh. Very quick car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that must have been fantastic for the two of you to show we've done it, we've we've arrived here um, only for an accident. We probably could have won that rally. Yeah. And then on to the next round. Uh, then it was the Thousand Lakes was your third event. Yeah. Your home event, Ari. Um, the first day, you were tweaking the suspension, but you were there, thereabouts. Come the second leg, the time started to flow. You just, you just look so comfortable in the car. Yeah. That I'm must have been, been such a feeling then to, to win no, your course, home event. Of course, of course, yeah, of course. And the maiden, maiden win for Persia and, mm-hmm. and and but we had this uh, problem right before the rally when I, well, not quite, but not far. I'm nearly at the big fight with uh, Jean Tot okay. on the test stage, and then uh, you know mechanics were driving. Uh, to Germany, to Bilstein, and then some soccer balls were flown overnight, and we did some extra tests and whatever. But anyway, finally it turned out well, and of course then San Remo, RAC, uh-huh. incredible Monte Carlo, yeah. particularly, and then even Sweden, five, yeah. five wins in a row, yeah. so of which particularly Monte Carlo just. But yeah. it's too long. I mean, it was just a yeah. eight-minute penalty. But whatever. But we won yeah. it. It had to. It had to happen like that, you know, because that made the story. That made the story. That made the story. That, Without that, that would have been yeah. just boring, boring yeah. nearly. That, but even there, it was important. Is that in the beginning the rally, Walter Röhl, who had already won four times with four yeah. different cars, he pulled away a slightly. I mean, I tried my best, and mm-hmm. I'm sure Terry, you remember we did Bourges. Bourges was 50 kilometer long horseshoe even, uh, stage that year, mm-hmm. and there was a, b- a fog. Uh, the vergla and the ice and tarmac and snow, everything. And and I thought I had made no mistakes that, you know, I, I got my act together for 50 kilometers. Yeah. And he beat us by six seconds on 50 kilometers. Uh-huh. Six seconds in a difficult conditions for 50 kilometers is not yeah. a lot. No. But, you know, it felt like a light year. And yeah. I said to Terry at the end of the stage, look at Walter Röhl, there's nothing we can do about him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the maestro. He will... And then we come to this following state, which is one of the, one of the three best in my life, San Nazer Desert. And it's tarmac, but some ice, you know, middle, uh, sometimes on you know, patches, but you know, slicks, or the, or that, but you have to be careful. Mm-hmm. And they gave, I remember they gave, a, you know, number zero or whatever. I didn't even know which compound. Yes. I still remember the start of San Nazer. There's a bridge, bridge. Third, fourth corner is a r- corner, and the bridge are normally you back off because the bridge and mm-hmm. but no, I felt we are like on the rails, like, and and I re- that lifted me to another level completely. I don't know what your electric collections are, but I said to myself, am I able to physically to drive at this speed? Because my brain would say slow down, yes, and it would have been so easy to la- just lift off a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I, at the same time, we went like in a speeded up film, and 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 the other half of myself said, no, don't lift off, just keep on going, yeah. keep on going against my own judgment. Mm-hmm. But the grip was so good, yeah. and we come to the end of the stage. Terry may not remember, but during the recce, like if I would have guessed, there's the last straight is on the forest, and there is really fast downhill. So it's really, it's gathering speed mm-hmm. at some slight kinks. But during the recce, I said, well, if you really, if you really go well, you got it nearly straight on. Mm-hmm. And, and I went like madman that downhill, round the corner, you come out of the forest, 90 degree right, Audi still there at the control. We beat them by 24 or 25 seconds on 22 kilometers. And the previous stage was uh-huh. 50k long. We lost by six, six, and I thought that was the best Ari can do. Yes. Oh, you can't believe that yes. feeling. Oh. <laughs> and and then, of then on, 
Walter could not touch us. No. It lifted our emotional and psychological to another level altogether. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, that, no, that's called a penalty. Now you think you've called a penalty. That was the first stage after the penalty. No, that was a daylight. Um, that was the one you said. Mm-hmm. Now we really go. That's <laughs> a, no, no, that's a, uh, yeah. And anyway, the, endless stories. Yeah, but Terry, that no, to yeah. be the, that, you know, never our is in the zone, you're in the zone, the car is in, you know, performing. Like that must be such a, a fantastic feeling. Absolutely, yeah. brilliant. That that's it's what you want, isn't it? That's what you know. You, especially you, with Mr. Rule uh-huh. getting. A hiding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, there, there was one stage you talked about that there was a discussion before it and the right tyres to pick. Do you need any? Yeah. What's that called? The cold sand, something or other. Yeah, put it in yeah. Yeah. And, and there was a big discussion about yeah, which yeah, tyres. Because it was so, better so, inf- it was so mixed, uh, confused information, and I. St- and I then I heard I had chosen all the tires, white winter tires, but white, you know, which are good on tarmac, good on snow, good on everything, on medium, medium everywhere. Yeah. But it means Compromise. never surprises. You can always push it. Mm-hmm. No surprises that you go big grip to no grip. Yeah. That doesn't happen. Medium grip everywhere. You go flat out, whatever yeah. surface. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and I had chosen that tire. Then uh, we had to spy in the uh, Audi camp. Yes. And because we had then the two minutes. Okay. to change oh, really? then the, and so they call Walter has taken uh, whatever mm-hmm. I, I asked which tire which tire I didn't know and it was a crude crude um, crude um, uh, 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 how do you call it? rain slicks okay uh, but you know crude with yes, um, cuts in the and yeah. and you know a shall I take that shall I, I said no I stick to mine and the thing is Terry may not remember but when Puse Terry village to the st- uh, state start there were snow but with tarmac tracks yeah. exactly so I said oh dear that's it we have lost it now so because we knew we were not sure about the uphill but once you, you go top, top of the top. hill the rest 30 kilometers clear tarmac we knew it mm-hmm. and I said oh if the uphill is going to have those tracks we lost it once the special state started it was all snow so for anyway so that worked out yeah. anyway mm-hmm. And like you know, you know, on then one Sweden and all, a couple of dramas and all. But then Argentina, you know, it's well documented. You know, you, you had huge crash. You suffered life changing injuries. And uh, Terry, you were laid up in hospital. Like uh, to come back from that, um, you were out of a rally car Ari, for over a year. No, it, uh, eighteen months. Eighteen months. Eighteen yeah. months. And it was San Remo. We just done. Well, I would like, okay. That's yeah. yeah. A zero. Rabi zero. Car. Like, oh, yeah. Over year. Over year. Yes, yeah. a year and a couple of months. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, to come back from that, and set times that would have been having us in the top two or three in the rally, to come back from the the injuries you sustained and Terry as well. Like that. Like that's another level. And that was your first time driving the evolution evolution of the Peugeot as well. Like, did that just cement that you need you wanted to be back in a rally car? I suppose. No, but of course I knew it before because uh, because you can't go to a rally car in the first place unless you really want to go in. Uh-huh. Of course, but in the meantime I had all my fears. I had, uh, uh, you know, I was sure that I have age. You know, I I totally I mentally uh, mm-hmm. totally lost, totally lost. But once the daylight came into my life. Mm-hmm. Then oh, it felt normal going back to the rally car, but of course I was very I was in a psychosis, a deep depression, uh, you know, totally uh, totally crazy in a certain way. And uh, and but then once that uh, you know I awoke into reality, I realized well, I you know everything is good. Mm-hmm. Let's and so it felt natural to go back into rally. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Terry, for you to get back in again, had you no worries, no fears? You just wanted to get back again as quick as you could as well. Yeah. I said when I was in hospital in Coruba mm-hmm. to Jean Todd that I would like to get in to mm-hmm. a car for the RAC rally. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me and he says, I think you're crazy. Yeah. Where's that effect? <laughs> and I said, No, I won't well, listen. Who are you going to go with? I said, The guy who won the German rally championship last year, Kelly Grundle. Kelly. He's no good. I said, yes, he is good. He's got a lot of potential. And I did the RAC with him. 
we were ranked second on the last night and we went off and hit a tree. Me was a bloody deck in the collar. Talk about cuckoo. Absolutely crazy. But it had to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, Terry, for yourself, like, the four years with Ari, you know, six World Championship wins, like, it must be, when you look back at your career, it has to be, like, a highlight of it all. At that time, it was just ecstasy. Mm -hmm. Today, it would mean nothing. I can't understand how so many people can keep winning these rallies, the same people, same people. <laughs> In our days, it was, mm -hmm. he wins. But it's his turn next. Yeah, 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 better throw. No, it's... Six of them. Yeah. And the, the flagship events, you know, you, you said the, the Safari Rally, the Monte Carlo, the RAC, like, they are World Championship rallies, but beyond that, they are the, the glamour events. Well, you can add the Thousand Lakes to that. The that thousand lakes, be, sorry, that yeah. has to be one yeah, of the classics. Absolutely, yeah. uh -huh. San Remo. Yeah. It's another classic. Mm hmm. You know, if you, if you went out with a list that you, of rallies you wanted to win, you ticked the absolutely. boxes, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. So, like, to wrap up then, like, Ari, you won 10 World Championship rallies, six of them was Terry. Like, obviously a very special time for you as well. No, of course, of course. Uh, I mean, together with Terry, we lived this uh, very special part uh, uh, because it was more than just rallying, it was more than just driving. It was this um, uh, version, new, new project. Uh, and as you said, uh, not not everybody believed in it. Uh, Persia had no experience of that kind of uh, rallying, and uh, so and because our team as a whole, we you can say uh, really that we won everything, but we lost everything. We lost people from our team. Uh, Ivory nearly died, uh, and and after all, well then you realize that. Um, that was an incredible period in our lives, just because we, the, all the colors, from the from the murkiest color to the brightest color, we saw them, and and that's what life is all about. And incredible adventure, and uh, and with Terry we 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 shared that, and I think we were very very privileged. Uh, we 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 went for it. Nobody can say that Ari was backing off. No. I should have, but that's me. Yes. <laughs> and 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 that's what um, that's what creates uh, memories. And uh, and uh, you 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 live your life to the full. You are not calculate, and you are not an opportunist. You go for it. You 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 you. Um, yes. You you just go for it, and um, and now we just lo lot of you just are grateful now. I mean, I think I just grateful what we have seen and experienced. Yeah. So it'll be a hard record to beat. That's for sure. That is for sure. So I'd love to just once again thank the two years for taking the time to make this happen, and yeah. I'd especially like to thank Mr. Donna Kelly for <laughs> facilitating this. Yeah. What an opportunity, you know, and it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you in person <laughs> rather than through a screen. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you.